This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. And today we're going to talk about dividing polynomials and we're going to use a specific technique. And our technique is going to be called synthetic division. All right, when we use synthetic division, <coughs> we have to have our polynomial in a certain form. And this uh, polynomial is in the perfect form. We have the highest power first, and then it goes downhill. Uh, so you'll see that we have a power 3, power 2, power 1, and we got power 0. So when the polynomial is written like that, it's going to be really easy to use. And you notice that we're also not skipping any powers. Notice we get a 3, a 2, a 1, and a 0. All right, and when we're dividing by this polynomial, x minus 2, it's really nice, too, because i got a coefficient 1 that's in front of the x, and I've got just this number here, so it's in a perfect form. All right, now in order to do uh, synthetic division, we're going to make this division sign. It's upside down from what people are normally used to seeing. Uh, and then we're going to do is take the coefficients from this first polynomial and write them inside. So I've got 1, 8, negative 4, and negative 32. On the outside, since we're dividing by x minus 2, we actually take the opposite of this. We put a 2 here. Always the opposite. So this is actually the 0, what we're dividing by. And this is our factor. Or at least we're going to assume it's a factor. It's something we're dividing by. So we're going to consider that to be a factor if we get a remainder of 0. All right, anyway, uh, that's the process, at least the setup. So now let's talk about the process. How does this division work? All right, first thing we do is we drag down this 1. So I just drag it down. So I write it down here, and I put a 1. Now we're going to multiply, add, multiply, add throughout the rest of the problem. So you take 2 times 1, 2. 8 plus 2, 10. Now let's do it again. 2 times 10. 20. And I add 16. All right, now I'm going to multiply 2 times 16 is 32. Now I add. All right, since this number is 0 and that number represents our remainder, I know that yes, indeed, this is a factor and that is a 0. Okay, so that's how this works. It, it, it is going to be a zero because it's a zero, a zero remainder. All right, what does this answer mean? Well, let's reconstruct the letters. You notice how we stripped off the letters? Well, we're going to put them back on again. So just like here, when you look at it in reverse, we have no letter. We have got an x, x squared, x cubed. So when you read it from right to left, the powers are going up. And that's how we recreate the letters here. So this is no x's. This is an x. And this would be an x squared. So therefore, that's my answer. My answer is x squared plus 10x plus 16. And that's my final answer. All right, we're going to take a look at another problem. Uh, and I'm just going to let this sit up here a moment so you can look at it or pause the video. And now I'm going to go on to example number two. All right, here's our example number two. And we're going to start working on this one. And we're going to see how to do this one as well. All right, well, we're going to set this one up for synthetic division also. However, we're going to have to be a little careful here. So you'll notice here that this one's different because do you see how all the powers are all scrambled? So we got degree two, degree one, degree four, degree none. It's all scrambled up. So let's put them in order. So I want to put the highest power first, 2x to the fourth. I'm going to put the next highest power, it looks like a square. Then there's an x term. And then there's this constant term. OK, so now I've brought a little bit of order to the problem. And everything's kind of written down in order, descending order. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a slight issue here because there's no cube. So when we do this problem, we're actually going to think of it as having a placeholder here. I've got no cubes, and you have to do this. Otherwise, the synthetic division is not going to work. So I'm putting in the placeholder, and sometimes you got to use more than one placeholder. 
This problem only has one placeholder. You got to have all powers represented. If you don't have the power, put a zero placeholder for that power. All right, now just like the other problem we just did, we're going to make a synthetic division sign, a line. And I'm going to put all those coefficients in there. Okay, so I'm going to put 2, 0, negative 3, 4, negative 9. Okay, I'm dividing by x plus 2. Okay, but I actually take the opposite and I put a minus 2. So always the opposite of whatever that divisor is. And I divide again. Okay, so the process works just like the previous one. First thing I do is I rewrite or drag down that leading coefficient. And I'm going to multiply add throughout the whole problem now. So I'm going to multiply. I get negative 4. Add. I'm going to multiply these together. 8, right? Positive. Two negatives multiply to the positive. Add them, I get 5. Multiply those two together. I get minus 10. Add negative 6. Multiply those together. 12. Add 3. The last number always represents the remainder. Turns out this problem has a remainder. That means that this is not a zero. That means this is not a factor. All right, however, we still have to write our answer down. Okay, so let's write down the answer. And we're going to recreate or redistribute all those x's in there. We're going to recreate the x's back in the problem. So remember, it always goes constant term x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth when we rebuild it. So here's going to be a number. Here's going to be the x. Here's going to be the x squared. And this is going to be the x cubed term. Okay, so what's the final answer? The final answer is 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Since this problem has a remainder, we put the remainder over the divisor. And our divisor is x plus 2. So we got a 3 over x plus 2. And that's our final answer. That would be the answer there. Okay, so those two examples hopefully will do it for you, and we'll have other videos about the rational root theorem, and we'll show you the connection between a polynomials, zeros, and factors, and figure out how to factor polynomials too. All right, so remember to go back to mathguide.com, check out all our other videos, our text lessons, and of course our uh, quizzes, which are all interactive. Take care.